Good afternoon, or good morning. I'm Gary Pearls, and this is a sample book talk for you TOKers out there, fresh off summer break. I read over break a book called The Maximum Security Book Club, which describes the discussions had among uh, nine convicts and an English professor, um, having read some of the great novels and short stories uh, of the modern era, I guess. And for me, the knowledge question that comes out of it is what happens when, and what are the implications of it when, personal knowledge varies between two people. So my personal knowledge of topic A versus your personal knowledge of topic A. Uh, and this comes out in the book in the chapter that describes the book club's reading of Lolita, which is a novel by Vladimir Nabokov. Uh, it's about 60 years old or so, I think by 1950s it came out. And it features a protagonist named Humbert Humbert, in case you haven't read it. He's infatuated with a young girl named Lolita, and eventually they have sex. He's a pedophile, and the convicts see him as nothing but a pedophile. But of course the English professor uh, wants them to see him as more of a whole character, uh, if only because that's what English teachers want readers to do, is to um, let people be complex and, and don't oversimplify. But for the convicts, that's all they know, uh, that's all they care about in regards to Humbert Humbert. And they, she feels, are missing something. They think she is crazy for considering other facts about him besides this one most obvious fact. So the knowledge that they have of him is influenced somewhat, I think, by their social context. They're in prison. In prison, pedophiles are the worst kind of people. And maybe for them, uh, there's some emotion about that. So maybe there's some fear for them that if they're uh, you know, talking about him in a sympathetic way, that that will get repeated outside the book club. So maybe there's some danger for them, actually. They're not totally free to express any kind of knowledge they want, uh, at least when it comes to their opinions of him. It's almost as if they have to maintain this masculine code. Uh, so there's a little bit of a, uh, a, a social psychology angle in this question as well. Uh, whereas for her, um, she's treating the book as mostly a novel. It's, it didn't happen. She doesn't get too worked up about the fact that this guy's a pedophile. Obviously she knows it's not right behavior, but she's treating it more as a linguistic exercise. She's interested in the language of the book, the language Humbert Humbert uses. Uh, and what's interesting is that by the end of the book, at the end of that chapter, she says, you know what? I've been taken in by Humbert Humbert's language. All these years that I've taught this novel, I've been too sympathetic to him, and I haven't really seen him for what he is, uh, because he's the narrator of the book, and uses his, his verbal tricks on the reader as much as he uses them on Lolita. So her knowledge of the book actually changes a little bit in light of what she hears from the convicts. So... One of the answers to my knowledge question is that, well, sometimes personal knowledge changes as a result of exposure to differing personal knowledge. Um, Humbert, Humbert. Obviously, um, this is a, a low stakes example, right? If you don't like a novel or if you think the character is a creep, who cares? The real world is not affected. Um, it does raise interesting questions about art and who's in charge of interpreting art. So should we ask Nabokov? Um, once a work of art is released out into the world, whose interpretation carries more weight? Is an English professor right because she's an English professor? Is she right because she's read the book 10 times and taught it for 15, 20 years? Um, or inevitably, do we have memories that impact our interpretation of a book? Uh, do we have social pressures that limit what we're allowed to say about the book? Uh, that make it much harder, much less clear if there's only one right interpretation or what makes an interpretation of a novel better than another. Um, so uh, besides emotion uh, and memory, uh, there's other, um, what you might call just past experience at work here, uh, not to imply anything about uh, these convicts' experience of pedophilia, uh, but their memories are clearly at play here They've heard how people talk about uh, pedophiles in prison. Um, 
and that combined with that emotion, I think those two ways of knowing are really driving their reaction to the book. Um, much more so, obviously, than for Makita Bruman, the English professor, because at the end of book club, she gets to walk out the door. She doesn't have to fear repercussions of expressing certain opinions. Um, so she's a little more free. And so again, that the context matters for what we're allowed to share. Uh, and maybe there's limits to what we can know about each other's personal knowledge. Maybe language you know, is not a perfect tool, um, in part because we're always in a social setting when we're using language, almost always. And the, the pressures that come with that and the fears that that can, can raise in us. Um, and so if, if the issue is higher stakes and the knowledge that I have of subject A differs greatly from the knowledge that you have of subject A, uh, it really matters what subject A is. And so an additional real life situation that this question makes me think of um, are the widely varying reactions to uh, Donald Trump's presidential campaign. So for some of us, taking it as a, um, on, a on the level of a reason, we're looking at some of the statements he makes, looking at some of the, even the ambigu ambiguous statements that he makes, um, but even the, the very clear statements that he makes. And lots of us who care only for the facts because you know we teach history or whatever we do, uh, we reject some of his statements as just utterly false and ridiculous and sometimes the opposite of the truth. Um, but what I know only makes me an elitist in the eyes of some of his strongest supporters because what they feel about him, and I use feel intentionally, uh, is that he's speaking for them. He's using blunt language. He's not concerned with sounding appropriate. Uh, and that feels good to them. And they support him for being uh, their spokesman and they feel silenced by elitists like me. So again, there's, there's different ways of knowing at work here. Um, and so as personal knowledge varies, I think one implication of that is that um, we are, in different topics, defaulting to different ways of knowing um, that lead us to these different knowledges of the same topic. How'd I do?